from downtown Albany, Georgia, and the home of Pretoria Fields Beer, this is the No Dams Given Podcast. And now, here's Trip Morgan and Billy Mann. Uh, this is another episode of the No Dams Given Podcast, <laughs> no and we are here man. with Eric Belusco, one of the partners of Pretoria Fields, uh, Billy Mann, the brewery manager of Pretoria Fields Collective. Present. Um, Present. <laughs> We've got both of the Singvelds, Glenn sing, sing and like Singvelds. Like sorry, la-la-la. I've been messing that up for a long time. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, so Glenn and Glenn, Chef and G. we're Just Chef, Chef G. G. We're yeah. very happy to be here today. And I'm Trip Morgan, uh, CEO of uh, of Pretoria Fields Collective. So the first thing we're going to start off today is. Today is an awesome day. We finally, yes, yes. finally um, made sure that our lactobacillus was not growing in our goza, and so mm-hmm. we are canning the goza now right. officially. And so the first thing I want to do, I haven't opened it or tested it Let's yet. Try it. So we're going to open our goza. Let's try it. Everybody's going to try it. And we are. Uh, Let's go. Let's make it happen. Yes, so let's just toast. Let's toast. Toast. Let's go. 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 let us go Three out, three to four hours. We were done. We got 161 cases. Um, I tried to tell Kevin that they were all bad, and we needed to go ahead and put them in my truck. But that didn't work. <laughs> Kevin wasn't buying that. It came up with something better than that. All right, guys, what's y'all's uh, first impression of the? Uh, I tell you, this is. Just, I mean, I, I haven't had anything bad from Pretoria. I, I mean, there's nothing. Right. I'm trying to, you know, kiss up to you, trip. <laughs> yes. But this is good beer. Yeah. This, it, but, you know, That's one of my good. favorites, you know. Yeah. But uh, this is great. Yeah. I don't think we're going to have a problem with this. This is awesome. I, um, I personally, um, that that stout has been my favorite. I'm only drinking the Skywater today because I've drunk so much stout. And I want to try some. got to go back to work, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this enhances your uh, culinary. But this uh, this goes might be in the, in the it's, in, it's, in my, it's in my, it's in my wheelhouse. Yeah, it's refreshing. It. I've it never done refreshing. a podcast on three or four beers before. We're going to see how this goes today. <laughs> so the, yeah, so the goza, it's supposed to be very basic. It's supposed to be drinkable. Um, mm-hmm. you know, gozas are wheat, coriander, and sea salt, as I was taught by Mr. Eric Belusco. What do you think, Mr. Belusco? I think it's uh, representative of uh, Gozer Germany very well. Yeah. 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 I think it goes well with seafood, too. I like the light. can. That's the first time I've seen the yellow can. Looks good, doesn't it? And, uh, it's very stylish. So I can, so we went with a little bit, I guess, not as flashy as a lot of breweries. But you know, we did. I like that, though. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. I, like, I like the, it's like a statement at the same time to me. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We thought we'd stand out yeah. through and, our and simplicity. And your beer speaks for itself anyway. Well, and that's exactly. that's sort of what we were hoping that, you know, it, that, now, number one, there's now, there's so much color when you walk in. Right. And that uh, that the actual simple color, the simple we'll white stand out. stands out. True. And then uh, so we're we're a little bit easier to find than yeah. than say I, I mean before when maybe there was nothing but um, but Miller Lite and then people were trying to get flashy to mm-hmm. to be able to see above the mm-hmm. above some of the bigger brands. All right. So it's a very it's good. Great. Even the bigger yeah. brands have gotten real flashy with their with their labeling. I think it's, I think when I first saw your design, I thought it was great. I, I loved it. Man, that's almost like lemonade. I, that's why I said it's light. It's real light. Wow. I can see me fishing and just drinking like twelve of these before I know it. Oh wow! Yeah. I, well, let me try yours. Maybe I'm drinking. You, you can try. <laughs> let me try yours, G. No, oh, my brother, you got to get your own. <laughs> it's amazing what time will do. <laughs> I'm just uh, just glad to be here today, though, guys. Really, this. Uh, and I think when I never remember your opening, uh, your groundbreaking. That was just so now to taste your product. It's just right. you know you, you guys are doing it. Speaking of groundbreaking, yeah, we're going from uh, our groundbreaking uh, to your groundbreaking. Tell us about it. 
Oh, it's been we, we're excited about it. We're just excited to be a part of the downtown family. Yeah. You guys have done such an outstanding job of, of making a footprint and putting us on right. the map. Right. I, was, I was telling G, really, um, uh, <clears throat> it was kind of like a diamond in the rough of uh, the building next to you guys. A lot of people slept it. You know, and uh, when they finally woke up, uh, uh, the train had left the station. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we we just um, just excited about being a part of it. Um, met Doc long, met uh, Trip, and, and uh, he's just been great. And Billy, uh, all you guys, I mean, you guys have put together an outstanding team. But let's talk about uh, the groundbreaking. The groundbreaking was, was outstanding. Uh, a lot of people showed up. Uh, it was a good day. It was a good day for Finally get the project on the way. It's been, you know, it's like uh, like pulling teeth sometimes. Oh, uh, so, yeah. yeah. Let's go back a little bit and tell us about how, how y'all got in there. Tell us about how y'all started the Albany Fish Company and when, when y'all opened that. We, we, uh, we started in December 2014, but we officially about January. But, but um, it was like, uh, called my dad, my, me and my brother was talking to my dad one Thanksgiving. I opened this home. <laughs> They're like, y'all boy don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he said you don't want to do nothing, nothing. So yeah. come that back, sounds like a daddy come back Christmas we ride he said well you wanted to put it somewhere what would you want to put it I said well I want to be on the main strip by water if I could be he said I found someone on the east side let's go on the east side <laughs> <laughs> so on the way we stopped in this shopping plaza I'm not even paying attention he talking to me we got the car he throw me the keys like this is your spot right here that's when it all started right there. Found that by accident, really. Uh, we wanted to lick the relic just was there, the water got as close to it as we could. But, you know, when your son tell you you want to do business with him, first thing I say is, no way, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> and, but uh, Gerard, is a, as my other son, he's in Los Angeles. Hey, Gerard. But uh, what Gerard wanted to do and what I wanted to do was, was really just build, build the – the uh, investment. He's in the investment. He works with Charles Schwab, and so his thing was he liked to watch money grow. I can't see it grow that way, because I'm a doer. I like to perform and act to create money, and uh, it's not money. that he called it wealth accumulation. I, I call it a profit, Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but being being that, we we're just going to do a fish market initially. That's all he wanted. Oh, okay. and, but, but when Glenn decided to come home, no, no, let me tell you the part. All right, so he was like, we're just going to do a fish market. And we just gonna fry some fish, and that's it. So I'm like, whatever you say, Dad. Whatever, whatever you say. So we going around looking for equipment. I said, Well, we are gonna need, we need some fry, Dad. I right, get some fry. We are gonna need a stove. Now I might have boil some water or something. Might need to boil water. That's all we gonna need to boil. One well, day I said, We might need a steamer now. Might need to steam Whoa, something. What are we doing? <laughs> that thing, you know, I got a whole kitchen. <laughs> so I. You know, we, you and I basically had a support group the past year. Yes. Like I told you my story of having yes. to deal with everything and all the trials and tribulations that go in through stuff. And you mentioned something, and it really uh, comes to the heart of entrepreneurism and how how some people think about money and, and you know, I think those people are in banking and, and, and that type of thing. And that's not bad, but I think it, the true entrepreneurial spirit is building something. Right. It's, it's creation of something. And some, in some ways, you... Uh, you, you're born with it, I think. Right. I, I, I tell you, Doc, when I went about, about a month and a half ago, had not been for you, I don't know where I would have gone. Because you had walked the walk. I remember coming to you that evening and saying, listen, I, I don't know about this. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm at my wit's end. You said, well, you know, I quit about two, three times. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I stopped. I, I hadn't given up two, three times. But it's not so much that... Uh, Anybody impedes it, or that is, it's just a process. Yeah, and you got to stay the course. Right, and to accomplish anything, it's first come the vision, right. and then then come to putting your shoulder to the wheel. Yeah, but in, in, when you talk about moving uh, from where we are now down to this this level of uh, a restaurant, it's, it takes a lot of thought and a lot of money. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, when we put it together, you know. Uh, I had to call a lot of people in. One was my wife. Maybe you ready to work for the rest of your life? You know, stand up. What happened to those cruises? And what happened to the trip to, to Paris? And you know, well, she said, I'm willing to give it up. And it's it's amazing what what mothers will do for their sons. That's right. <laughs> so, is the plan to move downtown? Will that location close and the new location open? Are you going to keep both locations? Is it? So, what sort of that? What is that idea? Well, 
We're not um, closing either. Of them. We're not closing. Um, what? Also, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 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 my first child. Yeah, he loves Albany. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I love that spot, and um, and the Flint is going is the evolution of Albany Fish Company. That's how I want to look at it. It's going to take the things that we we love to do, and just put it in a more like a professional, more more elegant platform. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So when, so when you say that, so it will it won't be the Albany Fish Company. No, absolutely no, not. No, no, no. Albany Fish Company is a standalone. Mm-hmm. Albany Fish Company will always be Albany Fish Company. Mm-hmm. I got customers coming in and say, you. I mean, they tell you, see, yeah. that's a great part of yeah, our business yeah. in terms of doing business with the public. They become owners. Right. They don't make they don't make any 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 money. Uh, they don't provide any funds to keep it going, but they own it. And if you if you if you Look at it that way, then you'll be successful. So they say you're not closing all the fish company. Right. I say fine. <laughs> okay, that means you're gonna be here. They say, well, we're coming here. We're coming downtown too. But as you know, uh, this this market of downtown is is an untapped, unknown market. Uh, so it's like it's like a renaissance. And uh, I heard a couple of local uh, investors say, well. I'm the first to put my foot in the water. Where the water was here, thank God, when we all got here. Mm-hmm. Right? What I mean by that, thank God for the founders of this city to to, 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 to form a city on the banks of the Flint River. Right. Uh, that's one thing we all benefited from. So I'm excited about the potential of downtown, the renaissance of downtown Albany. Yeah. Well, I mean, we got all the tools. I mean, we, yes. we were giving them to the yes. natural resources. Yes. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt that when we talk to the Chamber of Commerce, they talk about other cities and how they would – they would um, they would love to have a river running right through and have the banks and because it it leads to uh, it leads to the tourism dollars and it leads to people wanting to come down. And we stuff. thought about a name, we couldn't think of a better That's name. It. We we said what's what's the name of the restaurant going to be? Uh, automatically, <laughs> we said the Flint. Yep. Mm-hmm. The Flint is a mighty river. Yeah, that's right. If you don't think the Flint is a mighty river, talk to those folk who was here in 1994, right. who learned the hard way that the Flint is a mighty river. And and and, when, and see, because it's not about, and as you guys have done with Pretoria Fields, you've taken uh, Southwest Georgia really in, into the, the the beer side of the house and put us on the map. We was in a uh, place up in a uh, up Atlanta at a brewery. And I, I hate to tell you, I tasted their, their product, and I told my wife, I said, you know, I can't wait to get back home to get me a real style. <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and, I don't, and she's not a beer drinker, you know, uh, but uh, and, 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 and this is it. Yeah. This is the style. This is my drink. Well, there's yeah. something to be said for hometown. There's something to be said to go in the fish company and knowing you guys and getting to know you. I mean, the food just tastes a little bit better. I appreciate you that. You know that? I mean, the food just tastes a little bit better when you know there's, you know, feel like there's family that's making it. And it's probably yes. the same thing with the same thing with the beer. Could be. Um, our guys, you know, I, I think the world of them, we've got world class guys, there's yes. no doubt. And yes. that's I by the grace of God. I agree. I mean, I agree. There's no, there's no. Uh, They're just super guys to work with. I remember Bill has been so supportive. He called you all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, we called him the other day and said, Bill, we don't have enough product. Before I could get on the phone, they were pulling up a product. <laughs> now I don't know how you managed to do that, but it worked. And you we know, don't so mess around. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, uh, sitting here in Albany, Georgia today, and we're talking about what the Flint is going to be. Um, the Flint is going to be a ecotourism piece, but what we intend to do as part of the family of downtown Albany is bring, is, is not heat up an old cup of coffee. We want to be a fresh cup of coffee. We want to do things that hadn't been done. We're thinking about blues on occasion. We're thinking about folk. And I love great country. I do. Uh, the sadder the song, the better the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we now one thing we won't have. We won't have any no rap. <laughs> 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 what if I want to come freestyle? You know, you know, you we gotta wait till Pops going on his coffee. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Hey, tell me about ecotourism. What do you mean by that? What I mean by ecotourism, the Flint will be Albany. We'll be Albany. We're gonna put out a campaign in the very near future that we're gonna ask Albanians 
to contribute to the motif. What the, what the restaurant would actually look like. We want old pictures. We want old artifacts. We want things that are, that are, are originally all Benny. Uh, yes, that's right. So when you walk in, the story will be told about the great city that sat on the bank of the Flint River in Doherty County, uh, the greatest city in southwest Georgia. And, uh, and so when you, when you talk about what it's going to look like, it's going to look like Albany. When you walk in there, you're just going to be a pictorial story of, 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 our, of our origin and where we are today. There'll be a lot about the original founders. There's going to be a lot about our past political history. There's going to be a lot about our future that's going to be beneficial to, to those coming from outside of Albany so that when they come in, you're going to have to come to this destination to get an understanding of who we are. So right. the walk-in and the, and the look will bring you back of the history. The food, the cuisine, we'll talk about that, will feel you, the evolution of Albany. Well, you think of down-home country food, it's going to be down-home country food, but with, a, with, a, with an elegant twist to it. Awesome. Yeah. Can you give us a hint of some couple of things? <laughs> <work it on? laughs> I, I'm gonna try to wow you. Uh, um, we're gonna be some of the staples. Uh, we're gonna, it's gonna, cause see, uh, the Flint's still gonna be a seafood based, seafood based restaurant. Hmm. With with other, with, we're gonna have steaks. We're gonna have a uh, duck. Uh, we're gonna have um, deer venison. We're gonna come in there with that. We're gonna have. Uh, quail on, on occasions because we're going to try and we're going to 90 percent of our product is going to come from from farms around this area mm, so we're going to awesome. try to be a farm yeah, to table yeah. restaurant as much as possible yeah because uh, uh this area talk about this this steak you're talking about in Pretoria. What, what the Victoria steak we talked about? Yeah, we okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we're gonna we're gonna talk about about bringing about aging a, a beer. I mean, aging a steak with your beer. Mm, awesome. And pair it with a beer. Yeah. That you guys created, and uh, that was gonna be a secret. But <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this may take so long to get out until yeah. it be open by the time. There are no by secrets time among friends. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so our. You know, that, and that's awesome. I mean, trying to do that, I think, is local. Yeah. It's community driven. It's uh, it's it's exactly what we've tried to do with the organic farm and bringing bringing those things. It's the idea. So the whole idea of the collective is that we don't have to grow all of our products. What we would really like to do is experiment on, you know. Grain or, or barley, there was allotments for barley in the state of Georgia in the 1970s. Well, we, we lost those allotments because there was no market for barley. Okay. Um, all of the big brewers started buying the grains from the Midwest. Well, uh, well, a lot of that knowledge base is gone on, on growth, and then the market was gone. Well, with the resurgence of small craft breweries in the state of Georgia, we feel like that the market will come back. And one of the things is trying to rebuild the knowledge, the farming knowledge base, and then sharing. And then, so the idea of the collective is to share that knowledge base with the surrounding community and have them grow, create a new market that not only will uh, Pretoria Fields buy, mm -hmm. but Sweetwater will buy, yes. or Terrapin will buy, or mm -hmm. what's your favorite brewery? Besides Pretoria Fields. Pretoria. Exactly. <laughs> there, there's no other. What's another brewery in the state? I mean, here in, in Georgia. In Georgia, yeah. Preacher Comforts might buy. We're big fans of Scofflaw. Scofflaw yeah. would yes. buy. Yes. So, so that's the idea with the um, with the collective, and I think it's the same thing that you mentioned, trying to come, trying to come and and get those local, that mm -hmm. local feel mm -hmm. and that local uh, right. local flavor. Right. Um, growing the antiquarian grains because they're so much harder to grow. I mean, there's a reason GMO exists. It's because it makes it easier. Right. <laughs> So, right. And probably I don't know. You come to with that in mind. Are there things when you're dealing with, with say antiquarian grains or different or local stuff? Do you have to think about that differently from a chef's perspective? Yeah. Okay. So, fish. Let's just talk about fish. All right. So you you have you have two different bass that I like, the striped bass, and then you have the um, it's a it's a hybrid striped bass. All right, so show bass, hopefully. show bass, yeah, show bass. So you, <laughs> the show I, bass. You, know, the show you like bass. show bass? Yeah. I love show yeah, bass. Yeah, I, do too. I like it. if it's fried. If it's fried, we're gonna put it with the sweet water. If it's grilled or black, we're gonna put it with a stout. But anyway, so striped bass and hybrid striped bass. All right, striped bass were having issues um, growing in the wild, so they came up with a hybrid that could grow that could, would flourish in any waters. 
But when you the hybrid took off because it's it's so plentiful. But when you taste the the, the God's made striped bass, mm-hmm. it's a whole different flavor, a whole different profile. If you know bass, so that that comes into play with with a lot of seafood, um, like tilapia. People eat tilapia, and tilapia has never even never existed in a while mm-hmm. until now. You know that ama- that amazes me, Glenn, because I could have saved a lot of money. <laughs> I never. I can remember buying football helmets in cleats. All I had to do was buy an easy bake up. I tried. I tried. It's some light bulbs, you know. I, tried to tell him. I could have saved a lot of money. I'm amazed. You know, you never see to amaze me. I'm trying to tell you. The knowledge is there, folks. The knowledge yes, is there. Yes. Yes. I want to know something. Who's better on the grill? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah? I'm not going to try I'm the man. I'm, play <laughs> I'm the man. But I only do it for my friends. Yeah. I got you. I don't, I'm not a commercial cook, no. but I will cook for friends. No. And my wife and I love to entertain in our home. So, you know, sometime we'll have you over, we'll do something good for you. But, uh, Smoke anything. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> we do we do, a, we do turkeys that I give out as gifts yeah. during, during the holidays. You but, uh, oh, turkeys. I'll be looking forward to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you to go yeah, to that Yeah, but we, we, we really, we're really blessed to, to, um, to have a community that families can flourish in. Mm-hmm. You know, the history of your family here, mm-hmm. the history of my family here. We came to Albany, Georgia in 1972. I actually came here to teach kids with severe emotional behavior disorders. Nobody t- ever told me that I would have to, you know, go the route that I've, I've gone, but I've enjoyed it. Albany is a phenomenal place to live. Mm-hmm. That's so, what we gotta get people to know, and downtown's a place to be. It, absolutely. <laughs> That's what yeah, we gotta get yeah, out there. Absolutely, and it, it is happening. You guys it have made happening. a big, yeah. big push in that direction. I was looking the other day, now when you look at uh, your Albany magazines, and I can't wait to, to you know, the, the, the movie industry in New York, I can tell you right now that they're coming this way because we got some of the most, I want to say, profound pieces that they got to have right here in southwest Georgia that Atlanta don't have, and we don't have the traffic. So we need to get you here quick. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so what I'm saying to you is we're, we're an untapped market, and what we're going to be doing and with Pretoria Fields and the Flint is introducing them to the quality of life of southwest Georgia. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a hidden it's a hidden gem, you know. We got the quail hunts that's come here every year. I can tell you a lot of deals for the state of Georgia has happened right in some of our major plantations. And I don't understand why those folk fly over Albany and entertain themselves in the plantations and don't come to Albany, Georgia. It's our fault. It is mm-hmm. an attitude, not an aptitude. What we got to say now is the glass is half filled, not half empty. And it's that's it's as simple it's as simple as that. You know, it's a it's a poor frog that doesn't croak up for us on the pond. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it only takes one person to be positive about the city. I mean, and I, well, I take that back. It takes one person to be negative. Right. But it's but it's is individually respond individually responsible to be positive about it as well. And so people say, well, or I have heard, and especially in previous years, a lot of negativity both about downtown. And we're never going to do anything down there, and and. And all that, and I heard a lot of that when, when I said we were we were going to build the brewery downtown. Um, but you know, it just takes one person. But but if we get a whole bunch of one individual people, yes. meaning one people, and they're all positive about it, and then that story gets told, and then that story gets told to somebody else. Next thing you know, next thing you know, attitudes start to change. And I think it's exactly what you're saying. I mean, and then once attitude attitudes start to change, then we'll start to see that 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 flourishing, um, continued movement, continued growth that that everybody wants. But it just takes just takes a little nudge. And I'm very proud of y'all for being part of that first little nudge. And, and well, that, us do you it. know, in all fairness, there's a lot of people who, who've done it. I can't say enough for for Pace, and I can't say enough for Bo. Those guys who've been around Albany for years, who who believed in Albany, and, and who's a part of this energy, you know, and it's about it's about the symmetry of that. But I, I say to people that uh, I ask people questions: How do you eat an elephant? Uh, say, oh, well, one bite at a time. And that's correct. I mean, it's just that simple. I mean, so let's let's start gnawing on this thing. <laughs> now, again, so if if I ever get the luxury to go to another city and fish or shoot something in the surrounding area, I'd love to be able to ride into that city and have a good meal and yes. cold beer mm-hmm. at, a, at a local brewery. Mm-hmm. So I think that it's definitely a, a step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, 
Is there a commercial break during this? No, <laughs> you're welcome. You have another one. You just, you just take the chance yeah, to have another one. Actually, 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 that was a good commercial yeah, break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, what, do you, what do you have in there? A shoulder. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> That's my guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't finished this one, but I need to try something new. There you go. I like the price. Try the scalp water there. You want to try a different beer? Yeah, try your... Yeah, oh, you had the scalp water. Oh, yeah, so definitely goes try the guns. Awesome. I'm a little sophisticated with my beer. Man, you drink all my guns. So you know we must be about at the halfway no, point if uh, beers are starting to change. I got it. My mama talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> you on your mama. I, like, I didn't try your uh, trick, Mr. Glenn. Tell, tell us what that trick is, so... Oh, Are you willing oh God, to share it? Yeah, I'm willing to share that. I was on the internet the other day, and I was rarely on the internet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, somebody shook up a coat and said, why do people tap it on the top? Because the bubbles that go to the top, they actually uh, congregate on the side of it. That's what forces the beer out of it. So if you really want to do something, next time just tap it around the side. <laughs> Even if you shake it up, it'll be fine. Now, I'm not willing to try that today, not here. <laughs> but I understand it works. We'll put it to the test one <laughs> yes. day. So we have a brewery down here now. We got an awesome restaurant coming. We have the River Aquarium. We have yes. all, all kind of yes. stuff going on and, and things going positive for us. What, what do you see needs to come next to really just keep the momentum going? More of the same. Well, yeah, More of the same. I, I, had the, I had the opportunity to visit uh, Memphis. My wife been trying to get me to go to Memphis forever. But I know I need entertainment mm -hmm. to come to Albany. So I went to Memphis, Tennessee. We actually stayed... In the uh, what's that the hotel where the ducks come down? Oh, the yeah. Peabody. Peabody, that's right. <laughs> we, we, stayed, <laughs> we stayed in the Peabody. The ducks would come down Cheers. in the morning and, and they would spend time in the water. But I said that to say that um, in that city, I went from spot to spot to spot to spot to spot. To spot. That's what it's all about. And that's what, that's what Glenn always that's said. That's what to got me. me to Atlanta. Right. Because I love that. I was in, a, in the, when Buckhead had that district like that. And that day, I went down and I, I came back home. I told my dad I'm going to move to Atlanta. I said, how you going to afford to go to Atlanta? I don't you can't know. afford to live here. I don't, I don't know. I'm going right to figure it out. <laughs> 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 I love the fact that I can go to one place and experience 40, 50 different things. Mm -hmm. And that's what Albany needs. Uh, the closest place to that to us is, is to, to that, that level is Atlanta. And Albany to me is like the Atlanta of the South, of South Georgia, and it, it, could, it could be the Atlanta of South Georgia. And downtown is is, is perfectly made for it, especially with the river. But Glenn, let's talk for a minute. You always you always talking to me about the city and the things that the city's got to do. Yeah. I mean, we we want we want to be fresh today, but we want to be forward in our thinking. What what do you what do you see the city has to do to to, to foster that kind of atmosphere? You're a young guy. I mean, you. You came back home. I appreciate that. I mean, your mother does anyway. I'd say that way. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we? What do we got to do? <laughs> the first thing, or well, a number of things, take is the the mindset is changing, and um, it's 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 the older older cats, older people got to understand that it's we all can be cohesive, that it has to be a little bit for everybody here. It can't just be for one demographics. It has to be enough for everybody and. And notice that the money people are between the ages of 30 and 50. That's who spends the most money. The young you spend the most, but those not the money. Ain't that who got the money. That's who spends the most money. <laughs> the younger people under 30 don't have no money. Over 50, y'all hold y'all money. <laughs> Be <All right>. careful. <laughs> but 30 to 50, we spend our money. So you have to cater to that group, but in a tasteful way. Because you don't want to run anybody away. You want you don't want to get it too hip hoppy. You don't want to get it too old folky. Talk about safety. <laughs> Talk about safety. I mean, that's one of the biggest push I've had about downtown. Was well, that safety? Safety. Oh, we're, this is the safest place in Albany. I, right. We're right, the, we're right yeah. across from the. We're right across from the uh, police station. I don't understand. What and there hasn't that. been anything down here in so long that uh, it, there's just there isn't there there has Zero been time. no crime. No. Yes. Yeah, there's been no. And problem. the police presence is here. We was coming back from Atlanta. We drove this. I drove this way. Me and the family. It was about four or five cop cars just chilling. So there, I see plenty of police presence. I haven't seen any crime. I think it was like a one or two incidents that happened a while back, and this put a put a, a bad mindset in people's mind. But it is no true. There's nothing really going on down here like that, and it's very patrolled here. But it's nothing that's that's not any different than any other city. Correct. I mean. Uh, yeah. 
People are people. And uh, what we got to do is, as a community, we can't give in to that kind of mindset. In essence, we're not going to let the thugs take our city. Mm -mm. Now, we, in all fairness, there are some people who just don't want to do the right thing. And when they don't, there's, there's a process there for those kind of people. Mm -hmm. But I think Albany uh, as a whole is, is, is a, a good, good community. I think we have an opportunity to better that community. But I'm looking forward to being a part of this downtown. And uh, I encourage uh, the city to take advantage of every opportunity to enhance safety. And, say, and also, it's, a, it's an attitude, like I spoke about earlier, about, about how do you eat the elephant one bite at a time. Well, how, how do you change an attitude? You change an attitude of a community one, one bite at a time. And, and a guy by the name of Martin told me once, he said, as an individual, you don't always get what you deserve. But as a community, we get what we deserve. So that's a challenge to us as a community to change our thinking. Um, I want to unpack something a little bit. So you said there's you need the city needs something for everyone. Talking about the demographics, and for me, and then said something about demographics. And I don't. For me, that that goes back to what we what I have said several different times. Talking about the public house and how I want it to be a place where the community can come together and where when you walk in there on any night, it you'll see a mixture of what Albany looks like. Is that is that sort of you know? Tell me a little bit more about that because to me that seems like that's what what we're trying to get at with the tap room. I like walking the downtown in districts, I, especially when I'm with my lady, we, we stop in all the shops and I don't have a specific, a specific taste. I like everything I, when it's clothing or, or music or food or anything. I, I'm a, I'm a, I have an eclectic mindset mm -hmm. on things. So I like good, but good might right. be a lot of different quality, things. Yeah. Exactly. Quality like of variety. Yeah. Exactly. I, all, the Flint coming downtown, like my father, we were talking. He said, the other restaurants going to come. I said, awesome. Mm -hmm. I said, because. The more, all, the better. The Flint is your, If is, we could get another brewery right down next to us, not it a would double our business. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it would. I mean, there would be, be twice as many people down here. That's twice as much. So we, we, everybody gets. To, you, you're not going to want Albany Fish going to go to Flint every day. But you're gonna to want to come downtown every day if yep. we get everything we need down there. That's exactly and right. that, that traffic and that that conversation and, and the people that buzz will, will just reverberate all and from then a Albany all the way out. Number will be right. more individuals. And then Albany becomes a destination. Mm -hmm. Right. That's you know what I mean? It becomes a place where okay, we got to get down to Albany. Yes. You heard what's going on down there? Mm -hmm. That's the type of thing we need. Yeah, and and really, and then that goes back to the whole you know getting back to our local culture and then the local food and. And, and bringing all of those things together. Right. I agree with you 100%. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's just exciting that, that, it's, uh, that this nucleus is in place to, to make it happen. And, and, and again, I can't I use the word renaissance. It's a, it's, it's a rebirth. That's the way I look at it. It is a rebirth mm -hmm. of, of downtown because Southwest Georgia, Albany, Georgia was the hub of Southwest Georgia. Correct. Mm -hmm. At one point, we just moved away from that and allowed other communities close to us to sort of take that 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 kind of lead. Um, and people talk about the interstate. I think it's a it's a plus that the interstate doesn't run with us. Because we can we can you gotta this gotta be that you gotta come here. And when you come here you gotta leave here a lot slower. You can't <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't drive. Right, you can't drive eight eighty miles an hour out of here. You gotta <laughs> so you got time to oh, look and see what we can. Well, I, I think having interstate down here would have been a it would have been helpful. Might have been helpful. Yes. We, we, well, I like, I like, I like. So one of the things, um, uh, I started a business. So my dad, um, when I was a kid, he was a pharmacist, and I always worked on his farm. And now that I've gotten older, he is my farmer. And uh, he had a degree in, uh, a degree in uh, agricultural economics, so it's not too far away from, away from him. I know all of the... Is issues the right word? Issues or opportunities, or opportunities <laughs> associated with working with dad and son. Um, <laughs> has that, I, I see what you, tell I me about the, the, the hardest uh, <laughs> the hardest part and tell me about the best parts. Best part, I get to see my dad every day. Dang right. I get to see my yep. dad every day. Down, I right. get to see my mother every day. Yep. Uh, my brother doesn't get that luxury. I get to... Uh, I get to talk to him, and he gets to give me his knowledge that he's that he's 
possessed wisdom all his life, and yep. then he gets to now how he give it to me. Delivery, <laughs> 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 the delivery, yeah. the delivery <laughs> might need to. Yeah, well, that's the problem with dads, right? Because yeah. I got sons, I got a son too, so I know the that you 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 want him to do right, you want him to be perfect, and sometimes it's getting it, getting that knowledge into him. That's the hard part. That part. Yeah. But other, it's, there's there's no negatives to it. I mean, you could. It's no, it's no other, it's no negatives because at the end of the day. Now, y'all never argue. That's a lie. (laughs) 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 So maybe argue is not a negative. Arguing is, uh, argue is just part of being. Well, you know, they say, they they say, they say Marvin Gaye would still be getting it on if he left his dad alone. (laughs) 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 And I always say that to Glenn. He said every time, (laughs) right before arguing. You keep arguing with me, but Marvin Gaye would still be getting it on if he left his dad alone. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what, I, you know, what I what I do say about that is, you know, it's it's hard. It's hard being um, family anyway because uh, you know how emotions are with family. Uh, the, the people you love are the people you're the hardest and you talk the most bluntest with. You expect and the then most you, out of right, you, and you talk blunt with those people when you leave. You rehashing and you debriefing and you sometimes wish you could take it back. But what I'll say about it is if if, if I could say any. From a perspective in terms of cheerleader, I want to be in the balcony, uh, not not down there with him any longer. I want to be a, a balcony supporter. Kind of like those two grumpy old guys in the Muppet Show. Yes. <laughs> 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 That's right. But I want to be. I want to be. I want to be a cheerleader. But I think um, I've, I've shared enough now in, in terms of you know it's, it's you you got to take it and move I, with it. I disagree. I do. I like your perspective on that. However, there's never. So sweet of you. you that's cool. <laughs> you get to see. It's always because every time I, every time I get in my feelings and I'm like, I gotta learn. What else he can tell me? I, I got this. I'm about a whole, whole another restaurant I'm about to come. Oh, what, what? Then there's something he'll put on my, on my mind, and I'm laying in the bed. I'm like, he did it again. <laughs> <laughs> he got me again. So, no, it's never gonna be a time where I need to hear something from you. It's never gonna be a time where you got the, the, what I need to hear, because um. You get guys, y'all be surprised that this is really the first time we've drank together. Nah, I would say this much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't. We don't. You know, I'm, 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 I'm going to need some hard good. And we all sit down. But, but it, it had to be Pretoria to bring us together. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, that style to do it every time. <laughs> but I'm old school. Yeah. But uh, I am old school. I'm just old school, guys. I and I mean. I am what I am. Uh, my mother raised six boys and two girls. Uh, my dad just wasn't there as a, as a father. He fathered us, but my mother raised six boys and two girls. And uh, the the only time that I changed my behavior was my mother came to school for something I had done, and she cried in the principal's office. That's the last time my mother came to school. So I, I tell my son this all the time. I say, listen, um, it's up to you what, what you do in life. I, I mean, you got the advantage now of, of some things people don't have. But the same thing with you. You, you, you trip. You, your dad is there. Your dad is there. And, and and what we, Southern Georgia, is is a Christian family based community. Yes, sir. That's what we are. That doesn't mean we can't have a good time. <laughs> it just means that's that's just who we are. So so I, but what I say to that is, Glenn, I tell you, it's, it's growth. I appreciate you. And uh, just listen to what I say. Don't, don't, don't be quiet. <laughs> That's beautiful, guys. That is beautiful. I don't need a little violin there, but my wife is like that. But it's nothing like a mother. No. You're right That's about another that. thing. My wife, I run everything in my house. The washing machine, the vacuum cleaner, the, you know. But my wife runs this family. Yeah. And uh, had not been for her, I don't know where, would it, where we would be. I joke all the time. I say, baby, I'd have been left me. You know, <laughs> and talking about coming downtown Albany, she's one of the biggest cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we even decided, she wanted she wanted to do a restaurant downtown before we even thought about it. Wow. And every time uh, we wanted to stop, she's like, no. No, every, right. <laughs> <So> every time <laughs> we wanted to give it up. She said, "No, we gotta do. Her, 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 we can do this." Well, she was your, uh, she was your other support group. She was telling you, right. that, uh, well, she's better looking." Than you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> 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 <laughs>